In the middle here we have the rotary switch. It's a nine position switch, very easy to use. We'll actually be running through each of those positions later on. You have four function buttons, send, pump, backlight and also the on off button. Again we'll be running through those. These three buttons also have a second function, scroll up, scroll down and enter. On the top of the analyzer you have a infrared emitter which will send the information to the printer. There's also an inbuilt torch. On this side of the analyzer you have a socket for a gas leak detector which is just a plug-in unit. Coming a bit further down again on the side of the analyzer you'll be able to see a white filter which is the particle filter. Here we have the water trap which will take out any condensate to make sure that the sample of gas going to the analyzer is a clean dry sample. Also on the front of the analyzer is a battery charging indicator which will be orange when it's charging. If we look at the connections on the bottom of the analyzer, you've got two connections for temperature. Now these are T1 and T2. You've got two connections for pressure, P1 and P2. Here is the connection for the sampling hose, so that's going to connect to the bottom of the water trap. Here we have the rubber bung, which is the drain plug for the water trap. And finally, we've got a connection here for the, the charger unit. Now, that can either be used with a 240 volt charger or with a 12 volt charger. On the back of the analyzer, this is the exhaust port for the flue gases. Here you have two magnets to actually attach the analyzer to a metal surface. To change the batteries or to change the particle filter you must first remove the rubber boot. The easiest way to do this is to remove it at the top and then pull the analyzer up away from the boot. On the back of the analyzer this is the battery compartment. Just undo the cover and you can get to the AA batteries. Also on the side of the analyzer you can see the particle filter. To check this we need to remove this whole assembly and you can get to the filter. It's actually the middle of the filter that gets dirty first. So if that filter was blocked, just dispose of this filter, replace it with a new filter and reassemble. Also, while we've got the rubber boot off, you can also see on the bottom of the instrument these connections are actually marked up as T1, T2, P1 and P2. Just replace the rubber boot, push it in at the bottom, pull it up at the top, and there you go. This is the standard flue probe. On the shaft of the flue probe, you've got this adjustment cone so you can actually gauge how far you put the probe into the flue of the boiler. On the tip of the probe you have a thermocouple, this wire, so that's actually going to measure flue temperature. The cable from the thermocouple runs down the side of the hose to this plug. The actual hose itself has a connector, black connector, with two O-ring seals.